welcome to the second chance platform i'm blessing i'm john so thank you so much for joining us today in this um, channel of this platform we talk about real life issues it's a it's a gospel a christian talk show where we talk about real life issues issues that pertain to us could be marriage relationship um, business career you know name it that's what we talk about yes i want to welcome you once again for joining us and also thank you so much for last week it was really uh, an honor to be able to answer some of your questions so thank you so much for last week um tonight's topic we're going to be in continuation or in conclusion of what we've been talking about in this month of uh, september so as september comes to end this month we've been talking about trusting god in, in various dimensions Trusting God mostly in adversity, how to trust God, what we did, and we've been sharing personal testimonies of what we did, how God came through for us. And um, so tonight we're going to be talking more about um, trusting trusting God with thanksgiving, what a thoughtful attitude can do for you when you're trusting God. And the scripture for tonight is First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 8, 10. So um, by way of introduction, First Thessalonians chapter 5, 8, 10 said, In all things you should give thanks. So, everything give thanks. So, let me read it so that we have a background for the kind of what we are trying to talk about today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, I'm just going to quickly read First Thessalonians chapter 5. Okay, please. Uh, First Thessalonians 5, 18, it says, And in the midst of everything, be always giving thanks. Hmm. But this is God's perfect plan for you in Christ Jesus. So it said, in the midst of everything. And that will be, uh, what version is that? Uh, this is uh, TPT. Okay, so let me go read it in King James. Then in the midst of everything, you should always give thanks. So if you read it in King James, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17, verse 18, sorry. Yeah, 5 18. 5 18. He said, he said, in everything give thanks, for, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So it means in everything, whether you're going through issues, whether you're, you're it's a hard time, whether you're celebrating, whether you whatever it is, he said, in everything give thanks. So before we start, I'm just going to encourage somebody to write. I don't know what it is you've been going through. I don't know what it is you are. You have you are in presently and you're trusting God and you're wondering God when are you going to come through. Tonight we just want to show you how to have a little bit of switch, tweak it a bit and see how this testimony comes faster. And also to have you know that confident knowing that okay, no matter what I'm going through, this is some certain attitude I should put on so that my testimony will come quickly. Praise the Lord. So Amen. let Brother John take over from there. Okay, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So basically, uh, I want to ask, what is Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. uh, Thanksgiving is, uh, I've put together, I said it's an, act, it's, it's an act of appreciating God for his goodness and faithfulness in your life, right? So most of the time, uh, we just, when we remember what God has done for us, uh, which we encourage everyone to do often as possible. Uh, every day, in fact, every day, uh, we just say, yeah, Father, thank you for this you have done. Thank you for life. Thank you for good health. Thank you for, it could be birthdays. It could be anything. It could be business breakthrough. It could be anything. But the thing when we say is anything, even when it's not going in the direction you expect it to be, it's, good to always give thanks to God. Like the Bible says, in all things. It didn't say in some things. Probably you might be in the office and uh, you've just received a query. The best thing I can advise every believer out there today is instead of murmuring and complaining, getting angry by it, just say, Father, I thank you for this query I've received. You are actually, they, 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 what you're doing by giving thanks in that ugly situation is that you're telling God over to you. And guess what? Everything will always turn out for your good, right? What we are saying is what we've experienced personally as believers in our day-to-day -day activities. It's not always 
uh, the way we've wanted it or how we've planned it. Everybody plans for good things in their life. There are times you wake up and you feel maybe some few body aches. The best thing to do is, Father, thank you for this body ache, right? You are thanking God for what is not good. And guess what? Healing will come speedily. Hallelujah. And the beauty, one beauty of thanking God is it makes you joyful all the time. Right? Rather than sitting down and complaining, oh God, you have not done this, you have not done that, you have not done uh, this thing you desire, God has not done it. Well, it's best you come and say, Father, thank you. So we're just moving, moving forward. We say, we're asking some questions, right? Who should give thanks? Sure. Who, should give thanks? Who should give thanks to God? He said, let everything that has bread praise, praise the Lord. As long as you are living, you are among those that should give God thanks, right? You are among those that should give God thanks. Uh, we want to, we want to add something to that. You have said it, said the Bible says that not everything that has to pray, praise the Lord. Yeah. So, even at further ones, that if you will not praise and you will raise what? Stones. So, you don't want God to raise stones in your pray, face to praise them. So, it's always good. The benefits of praises are endless. There are so much that no reason why you should praise God. Very That's true. why who should praise God? You and I we need to praise God. Yeah. So I need to praise God. Just, just, praise God. just this, in case you're also saying the other question we have here, when should we give thanks? All the time. Yeah. Like I said earlier on, even in that ugly situation, let the first thing that comes to your mind, Father, thank you. Oh Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this problem. So I think I'll just quickly share. My own personal testimony, right? Then we'll go down with other things we have. What do you think? Go ahead, please. So, uh, some years ago when I came to Lagos, I I got a job and uh, it was a good thing. It was working in the direction I wanted. So, of course, Father, thank you for this job. Thank you for breakthroughs, you know, when you're looking at that opportunity of getting good pay and everything. Along the line, it got to the point after the training and it was time to, it was actually a sales job though, and it was time to go down to the field where you get the sales. Mm -hmm. And you know, in sales, you always have targets. You always have, uh, you must meet your target. And when you don't meet your target, it's a problem. So I got to the field expecting that, oh, by the time I meet one, between one to 10 persons, I would have gotten a sale. That wasn't the case. It was so difficult. First of all, when I joined the company, it was didn't give me an official car, you know. So I was practically taking bus from one location to another, <laughs> and to cover a certain area, I might just go some certain kilometer and start coming back, going from door to door, location to location. It wasn't easy. Sometimes it would rain. Sometimes the sun, you know. And the, 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 the worst part of this whole thing was that <clears throat> when you get to a particular location or a site, the security man will bounce you from the gate. <laughs> it was that frustrating, you know. So, at some point, I sat down and started thinking. I said, God, I think I'll just go back to where I came from. Because I, it was not looking like where I was coming from was far better than where I was at this particular time. You know, when we talk about this testimony, let's also understand that it comes with a lot of frustration, right? Before you celebrate the glory, right? Let's look at those difficult things we went through. So that's what I, why I'm going uh, this far to explain to you. So along the line, I... I said, okay, fine. Maybe I'll just, if I was staying with my elder sister then, uh, I said, well, by the end of this month, I'll just tell my sister that I'm tired. Let me just go and go back to my state. As God will have it, that Sunday I was in church and what I could hear my bishop preaching that day, that's the only thing I can remember I said. And it was just on it in everything give thanks in everything give thanks i was sitting at the gallery 
It was like my eyes opened. In all things, give thanks. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Monday came. As you know, Satan will always want to make you um, look funny. The first place I could remember I went to, the security man just bounced me back. Immediately he did that, I just thought, ah, Father, thank you. I was like a math person. This guy just embarrassed you. And I'm saying, Father, thank you. I went to another site. There was nobody. You know? Even for somebody to say, okay, what are you guys into? For somebody to have collected my card. Ah, Father, thank you that they collected my card today. <laughs> so here's the testimony. Or here's this part of celebration. That same year, or that, yes, the target comes in at the beginning of the year. The first three months I was giving, in short, I was giving a target for the entire year. And within three months, I had exceeded my target. How? I don't know. The funniest part was that when my first day came in, it was, it was collected from me. <laughs> it was collected from me. So for you to know that Satan wanted to terminate that, uh, that light I got about Thanksgiving right because he wanted to bring all things that will make me get angry and forget about the part of thanksgiving you know that first day in sales when you have that first day trust me it's a big deal and that day went just went like that so oh father thank you it was painful so i'm i'm sharing this so that you understand that it's not always when you say Father, thank you. That yeah, is always easy. Easy. But just make that conscious effort. That's why I said uh, Thanksgiving is an act of appreciating God. You don't need to feel like it, right? Just consciously put yourself together to say, ah, Father, I thank you. And in, most of the time, I put that scenario in my face. Close my eyes and I say, Father, thank you. It's like I'm seeing the thing that I'm thanking God for, you know? <laughs> so what, what? Okay, so that same first three months, after that first deal was taken, deals started coming. Channels that no one has ever entered into. I started going into those channels, breaking new, new grounds. And after I exceeded my targets, I was talking with my branch manager that I remember that particular day. I can still remember where I sat. And um, right there, I just told the sir, I've met my target for the year, you know. Expecting congratulations. That was what I was expecting. <laughs> the next thing said to me, who told you your target was this? I was like, wow. I was confused. And he said, no, your target has been moved to... 100 million. Initially it was 50 million. It has been moved to 100 million. Immediately said that I didn't complain because the word of in all things give thanks was very, very strong and active in me as a then. It's, it's more active right now, right? So when he said it and he left, I said, Father, I thank you. My thanking God that particular minute was, Lord, over to you. Sure. You did this one. This very one is nothing to you. Fast forward to the end of that year. I exceeded my target with about three million. This is someone that has never, that was never, I've, I have no experience in that industry. I just came in for the first time and that target was exceeded. I don't care whether it was exceeded in one night. Mm -hmm. But for the fact that I exceeded, I didn't do below. And trust me, if I'd even done below, guess what? I would still say, Father, I thank you. So this continued over and over that anytime they give me targets, even when the target, I know the target is bigger than my capacity, I will say, Father, I thank you. And that automatically helps me to hand over these things to God. And it's been from one breakthrough to another from that what i'm telling you that you telling you is over 10 years ago over 10 years ago so you can imagine at that minute of me almost giving up in short i had already given up i'd already given myself time to say by the end of the month i'll tell my sister 
I'll resign <clears throat> and I'll move back to, to my state. And guess what? God turns everything around. He turned it around. And even from, from the conversation with my, my, my manager then, or the man, management team, they really were surprised that they've not really seen that kind of record before. So these things that we're talking about today to say, give thanks, is just to encourage someone. You might just be at that last. You probably, you probably would have given up. But take this word today. In that same situation, go back to God. Father, I thank you. And guess what? Things, it, it would have been worse, right? Yeah. I probably wouldn't have gotten any deal, right? For, you to, for me to make you see or expand this testimony, there are some persons that have come into this same industry and in six months, not even one sale, right? Not even one transaction. Not in that talk of someone that just came into the industry for the first time and in that year is exceeding his title. This God is too faithful. There are principles to the kingdom. And if you can apply these things, this aspect of thanksgiving to what you're doing, trust me, your doors will open. That situation that seems to be like, oh, it's too, it's too big for me to carry, will become nothing. Because why? You've constantly appreciated God concerning it from the depth of your heart, and you mean it. And God will step into your battle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, um, we're looking at this question, right? And we're saying, how do we give thanks? There are several ways, but we'll be looking at basically two. Okay. Yeah, it said true praise or true singing, true worship. Hallelujah. Praise. So you want to throw light on that? Um, true praise and singing basically means that um, worshiping God from your heart. It's not just uh, um, the, they say we should sing, so I'm just singing. No, it's actually a certain time you're focusing, you're telling yourself intentionally thanking God, intentionally praising God from the depth of your heart, being grateful for, you know, sitting down grateful, Lord, I'm grateful for my life, I'm grateful for health, I'm grateful for food, I'm grateful that I have a shelter over my head, you know, you are naming things and you're glorifying God for those things that God has done for you. That's what I see, you know, praising, worshiping God is. Yeah, very, 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 very true. So, uh, in like what she has explained sometimes some persons might say i don't know how to sing there are gospel tapes out there that you can just put you know you can just put on your player or on your phone you can play through your phone and just sing along funny enough god is not interested in your sweet voice what is interested is in your heart you're saying, I presume, I presume, sometimes I presume, I mean, somebody's thinking of, oh, that transaction has not entered at that particular time, you know. It's for you to focus on God. Leave everything behind. Forget that contract. Forget that worries. Just focus on Him. Father, thank you. I worship you. I give you all the praise. When you're singing now, right? Ah. Lord, you reign forever, you're the same, you know, just keep worshipping and praising. Guess what? God will receive your praise. It will come into his presence as a sweet smelling servant. Hallelujah. And when that happens, jackpot for you. Jack, jackpot for you. So, oh, you want to say something? No, no, no. Okay. So, the set, like in the Psalms, it says, sing unto God, sing praises to his name, Estall him that readeth upon the heavens by his name, hallelujah, and rejoice before him. So you don't come with anger, you don't come with, with um, how do you call it now? You don't frown, you don't do, you don't act or carry yourself in a certain way like someone is forcing you to do it. Or maybe after listening to this message, they say we should praise God, then yeah, let me just that. go, let me just do it now, let me just sing again. Your heart has to be there. 
right? And you have to rejoice. You have to be happy. Let joy come out of your heart in praising Him, right? And so there was one time in church where um, there was a song that the, the, the choir ministered on in praise. Uh, Almighty Father in heaven. That song really came to me. In fact, although my eyes are very strong, I didn't cry. You, if you don't know how to cry, don't force it. In short, the tears thing during worship, it comes naturally. It's not something that you need to fake, right? It's something that you just, it comes from within, you know? And that song really ministered to me. I was just seeing God, just praising Him. As at that particular point, I wasn't praising God for anything, as in, I, was, I didn't have a request, but rather I just praised His name. And I know that week, a lot of things happened. So, our encouragement to someone today is, let's always have to cultivate this culture of praising God without requesting for anything. And that which you are, what, that you are requesting from God will be granted unto you. Amen. So the second one is um, true prayers or true words, right? Uh, the, the book of um, Psalm 34, 2 to 10, if you read that, I'll just take a few uh, lines. You can read that later, Psalm 34, 2 to 10. He said, My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Right? He said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their face were not ashamed. So these are some things that this, this last line is what happens to you when you praise God, right? Sometimes, like in my testimony, what I shared now was I did in prayers, in words, right? When the security man would tell me, you cannot enter here, go back, because I was striking, I didn't have a car, or for whatever reason, right? And I just say, ah, oh, Father, I thank you that this security man has just asked me to leave. Ah, Jesus, I thank you. Guess what? Like from the testimony, before you know, I started gaining ground. I started penetrating, right? And let me say, sometimes it doesn't happen automatically. But praising, not because of what you want from Him, praising because He is God. Hallelujah. Like uh, the testimony of Bishop Uribe when uh, uh, Mama Faith was, uh, was afflicted, uh, he went around preaching. It wasn't one day came to God and said, God, that you heal my wife or not doesn't make you God. You are God in all situations, right? It does not stop me from worshiping you, whether you heal her. So it's more or less you are saying, God, whether you do it or not, you are my God, right? And I will praise you, irrespective of the situation. And that is the, 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 the culture we want people to cultivate by this uh, message tonight. And that's why we're sharing our personal, te personal testimony for you to know that it is not far from you, it is closer to you than you think. If we can do it, you can. It's very easy. It's just all you need to do is ask God for grace to help you out. You want to go, you share something? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, um, I'll just throw a little bit of light to just this short term brief testimony. In 2014, the 20th, 2012, I, I had a little bit of an um, issue. I told God, I said, why is it that all I just get is salary? My salary and that's all. I don't even get favor. Nobody will call me and say, oh, please send me your account number. Or oh, a business deal will call me nothing. And it felt, I felt a bit overwhelmed with it because the bills were coming. In the end, there's everybody's calling you sis, sister, alpha. Hey, why the sis, sister, alpha? They don't even know what's up with sis. So I remember that particular period. I, I took myself and I went to pray where I usually go to pray. Canaan, and I was there and I was like, Lord, I've just come to bless you. I didn't come to ask God for anything. I just was well, just there thanking God that I have a job. I say thank you. That the job pays me salary at the end of the month, Father, thank you. 
that are not among those that they work and they don't get paid at the end of the month, Lord, I'm grateful. I just thank God, thank God, thank God. And I was done that weekend, I came back. As God will have it. At that time, when I resumed that work, my salary was 50k. It was so small. But that same month, I was increased. That same month, we had a project in the office, and she did not, uh, our boss did not only just pay us our salary, she also gave us bonuses. You know, so it was as if, oh wow, finally. And the beautiful testimony of it is that somebody that, I didn't even remember this person still has my number, just called me from the blue. I sent me your account number, let me just bless you now. Hey? And the person, see, the person sent me 40K. 40K, yes, was small, but the, 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 the significance of that money is something I will not forget yeah. because I had, thank God, at that time, before then, I had not had anybody send me a dime. Like, okay, she's working, so nobody cares. You know, she's working, she can take care of herself, she's a big girl. But that money was so, it was like somebody gave me 40 million. That was how it felt like yeah. that period. So I just want to thank, tell, tell somebody out there right now that the beauty of thanking God and just having to know that one thing I want to let out is this it's not easy. You know, it's easy for them. They are saying it because they think it's easy. It's not easy. It's a very tough thing to do. But if you can cultivate the culture, the habit of yeah. constantly just putting yourself together and say, Lord, I thank you. You walk out of that embassy, you have been told, oh God, you are going to travel, you are going to go abroad, you are going to stay in that country, you are going to do this. And you get there and they just give you, you are not going. And you come out, you say, oh Lord, thank you. See, it's not easy oh, to say, oh Lord, thank you. At that point, you feel like, God, where are you? Why have you abandoned me? Yes, but what we are saying is, you know, things like the scriptures say, give thanks. Yeah. It might be at that time, God does not even want you to go. There are some blessings that if I'd had it the time I wanted it, I would have been lost. Yeah. So sometimes sure. now I sit and I say, Lord, I thank you because at that time you didn't give it to me. Yes, I desperately wanted it. I was praying back and forth. God, I need it. I need it. But he had a plan. Of course. Like a good father would. He will not give a car to his eight years old son. So God knew at that time, if he had given me those blessings I was cocking and breaking the heavens over, screaming over, I would have been gone. True. But there are some blessings God has allowed, you know, I've noticed that, okay, I remember in that club, somebody we both know, you know, this person was really trusting God for, you know, God give me this, God give me this. And God gave him a little light of breakthrough. Oh no, the guy Jackpa, he didn't Jackpa abroad, he left... He went into the other way and started living the other life, you know. Now, looking at that kind of life, you're like, okay, would that have been better? Are you not saying God is partial? He's not. Mm -hmm. But there are some things that God will not allow presently because he has a plan. He will test you. If he sees that, oh, you can pass it, then he gives you more. So what I want to tell somebody today, whatever it is you have been through or you are going through, learn to cultivate the habit of thanksgiving. Be grateful. Yeah. be grateful that you are alive. Be grateful. Mm -hmm. I always say this. Ah, you are not married. You are 35. You are 40. You are 45. No problem. There are also people that are nonatic. They are in, they are in Yaba left. They are 45. They are 30. They are your age. They are dead. They are in the grave. They are not talking about marriage. Mm -hmm. What about the ones that are sick? They are even praying for healing. They are not thinking of marriage right now. So be grateful for where you are part time. Be thankful for what God has done for you. If you are very fairly used right now, please enjoy it and be thankful to God that, oh Lord, thank you, because what I can wear right now is bend down, select, I'm grateful that I am not sick, I can wear my clothes. Mm -hmm. Be grateful because that is your level. At some point, God will take you beyond that. Because one thing I know with Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving helps you for your level to be fast. It gives you speed in terms of, you know, when you're trusting God for something, when you're trusting God to get to where God has promised you he, will get to, he wants you to get to. When you are grateful, you have an attitude of gratefulness, attitude of, of thanksgiving. You're constantly grateful for the little you the little light you have seen. Your speed will be like the speed of light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So just to add, thanksgiving is an application for more. Just understand that, like what she has said, sometimes instead of you feeling disappointed, see beyond that. Mm -hmm. The reason you complain is because you can't see beyond your current state. Situation, yeah. Or your current situation. You can't see beyond that. Right? So understand that anybody you see today that is complaining is because they can't see beyond that situation. As believers, see beyond that situation. There's a reason it has not come. Mm. Right? Like some 
I remember having a discussion with my wife one time where I said, uh, the reason why some persons have not settled down is because they are not yet matured for it. And trust me, no matter how much you love your, your child, if that child asks you for a, a serpent as a pet, you will never you will it. never relate never, to that child. Never. No, you say, and as a parent, you love this child, right? If the child comes and tell you, "Oh, I want to," what kind of? I'm looking for the worst thing that is around the house. That the child will say, "I want to. I want to. This is what I want to. I want to play with blade." You can. You want. You want. You want. Don't. The child might be feeling bad to say, oh, that child might give me this, mommy did, you say give no. me this. They're not giving it to that child because, you know, that thing can hurt that child. No, it would help the child. Right? Mm -hmm. Just the same way you cannot give your car key to your 10 years old son or 7 years old, old child to go and drive your car. Do you hate that child? No. So let's understand that God loves you. He has this thing in his hand to give to you. But he has a plan. And he has a timing for all his plans. So I remember something. The Bible says that a thousand years is like a day before God. The course. same way a day is like a thousand years before God. So it's his own time. You can't question him. That's why he's God. Mm -hmm. The only thing you can do to draw down his presence, to change the hand of God. One thing I realized about Thanksgiving, when you, know when you pray, God sends his angels. Mm -hmm. He said, but when you thank God, he said, he happy the praises of his people. Mm -hmm. God comes by himself and says, ah, son, daughter, I'm here. Oh, what do you want? I'm here to answer you. So, if you want your speedy testimony, go beyond the realm of constant back and forth. There's nothing wrong in praying, but this time, pray in thanksgiving. thanksgiving. Let your prayer be more thankfulness yeah. and then asking. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, let's move forward, right? Uh, it's very, very interesting today. Uh, I'm even blessed by this message. Uh, so, we'll be looking at benefit of thanksgiving, right? The first one here is God steps into your battle. So, you want to say something about it? Um, it's the same thing I said earlier. God steps into your battles. He's, he's having the praises of what? His people. people. So he's not going to send his angel. They will not say, okay, uh, let's use a scriptural illustration. And then he prayed. And the prince of Pasha heard his blessings. No. No Pasha or anything can hold God's blessing, hold God down. At all. Nothing can hold him down. So if if you are a thankful person, you're constantly in the mood of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. his, his presence is constantly with you. So he takes over your battle. Mm -hmm. He protects you. Because mm -hmm. this time around, you are, it, it's something he cannot give to himself. God can do every other thing, but he cannot thank himself. He cannot praise himself. So it is very particular when you are the type that sits down constantly thank God. Father, thank you. For nothing, you just say thank you. For just thank you. Mm -hmm. He's always with you. So he shields you and protects you from evil. So that that Thanksgiving will keep coming back. It's like a child coming to tell the father, Ah, daddy, thank you. Ah, anything, daddy, thank you. Anything that is about that child, the father is very, you know, it's not like the father is partial. But you call it partial in the layman sense. But the child becomes, the father becomes you know, so aware of this. And this child is so grateful. This child mm -hmm. is so, it's, it's natural. Now he, wants imagine that he wants to do more. Imagine mm -hmm. that when it's God. That's how I see it. Yeah. Praise God. So, hallelujah. So, I would just add, right? So, there's this uh, scripture that we've always look, we looked at several times this month, right? I don't know. I love this part of the scripture. Second Chronicles 20. Uh, if you read down or looking around 21, uh, where some kings, uh, some nations came against Judah and Joseph had uh, gathered the uh, people for prayers, a prophecy went forth and said, you do not need to fight in this battle. At all. Right? But Joseph, jo Joseph had went ahead to do something which is very significant. And that is to say, he gathered the people, some of the people, and said, you people will praise God as we go against this the enemy. Evil, yeah. Guess what? That word that God has said came to pass speedily. Hallelujah. Praise. So basically, because they were praising God, like our sister has explained, when you praise God, it comes down. Remember, we are looking at God steps into your battle and He will perfect your victory. 
In fact, I've never heard it that someone is going to fight, going into a battle, and you are there. The main, the, the soldiers that you need to, this is three nations have come against you. Number one, their, their soldiers are more than yours. And you still set some of these men and some of these men aside to praise God when you should channel them into, into, the, into, the, the, battlefield. into the battlefield. And their victory came. There was confusion in the camp of the enemy. And they started killing themselves. Amen. So, I, this, this, I never saw it like this before. All the time I've been reading this particular scripture. But right now, there's a different uh, feeling. There's a different, there's a remark concerning this. Even when God has said something concerning you, and you are expecting it, he has given you the date, he has given you the time. Switch to praise. Amen. Amen. And he will step into your battle. Hallelujah. Praise. The second one here is your expectations are perfected. Or you can say uh, your victory is guaranteed. totally won or guaranteed. Hallelujah. So uh, in the book of Luke 17, 19, Jesus said, he said, and he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. So this was talking about the leper. He said, were there not ten that were healed? Out of ten, where are the other nine? Out of ten, just one person came. Yes, they were cleansed, but they were not made whole. The only one that came, and Jesus said unto him, thy faith has made thee whole. He came back and he went with his perfect healing. Hallelujah. So, when you always remember to give God thanks, when you always make it an act, you will cultivate the culture of always thanking God. It might not make sense, right? Oh, Father, thank you for giving me this food today. Ah, thank you for providing it. You may have been the one that, that even, it's not even you. Oh, you went to work, they paid you salary, you went and bought food. And you feel it's not enough to give God thanks. My dear, it's more than enough to give God thanks. Some persons don't even have the job. Some persons have worked all through the month and one mistake came and they've used that, the salary to settle the mistake and they are hungry. Some persons, they have food but they can't eat. I heard a story of a, a, very, a rich man. Uh, this is true life story. With all his wealth, with all the money he has, as I then they said he can't finish, he can't eat a food of one dollar in a day. Because he had challenge in his health. Right? So that you have good health, you have mouth to eat, is enough reason to give God thanks. So don't see anything that you do that is your ability. Oh, sometimes some people will say, "Oh, it's 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 my it's my it's my skills, it's my it's my intelligence, it's my wisdom." No, Hallelujah. Uh, he said, "Except the man, except the Lord builded a house." He said, "What well, the builders?" So it is not your strength. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. So uh, we'll move forward. Oh, you want to contribute to this? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the next one we're looking at here is, uh, we've already talked about it. They say you become a carrier of God's presence, right? Because when you praise God, God comes down himself, right? You become a carrier of his presence anywhere you go. And you just, and that aura goes with you. So even when you praise God and you carry his presence, those doors opens to you, favor, blessings, things that you don't even um, that you don't even deserve will just come to you because why you carry his presence. Hallelujah. So uh, the next one is you are contented when you praise God. How do I mean? I will just say a little, my wife also share more light. You see, there's this song that says, Can't your blessings name them one by one? 
Can't your blessing see what the Lord has done? Can't your blessing name them one by one? And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So there was one time I sat there. I said, okay, let me thank God. I was just like, oh, maybe two minutes. Because I understand that most times believers, the aspect of thanksgiving is the shortest part of their prayer. Oh, it's very short. <laughs> so, it's so short. Yeah. That's so, money I or that particular day, I can't remember if it was money or evening. I just said, okay, let me just thank God for what he has done since the beginning of the year. And I started. I've not finished one. I remember another one. Ah, God, you did this thing. Ah, Father, thank you. I'm still saying that thank you. I've remembered another one that he has done. Let's do a practical. Let's just do this practical in your own quiet time. Take a pen. Begin to write what God has done for you from the beginning of this month up until now. You'll be amazed. The same road you passed, someone passed it and died. Or before you go to that particular place, something had happened. Hallelujah. I know of someone that was having his bat. All of a sudden, a stray bullet just fell down. That bullet would have taken his life. Yeah, right? So, that, you are, even when you are inside your house, I see some, in short, there's been a lot of videos I've seen online this period where people see that their POP just collapsed. Just collapsed. I saw that one. Imagine if they were under it. So, whether you are inside your house, whether you are outside, it's enough reason for you to give God thanks. All these are blessings. This is what God has done for you. So, you might be saying, oh, I did this business. I, I didn't make any profit. But you thought your capital. <laughs> Some people did business. Some people, people did business. Money. And yeah, they lost. They lost, lost their business. house. They lost their business. <laughs> so, it's enough reason for you to give God thanks. Sometimes you do business and you run at a loss. It's enough reason to give God thanks. Why? Because there's a lesson to be learned. that you have learned from that yes. transaction. That you might you will not make again. True. Right? Exactly. So yeah. when you serve God, so and most of the time, the reason most people are not contented is it has to do with money. Right? It has to do with money. They'll say that the money is not even enough to, to meet the needs in the house, or what you want to do is not enough. That's enough reason for you to give God thanks. Because thanksgiving is a multiplier. Hallelujah. So you want to add something. There's a scripture here. He said, uh, this is encouraging us to uh, always remember to remember the blessings of God in our life. It's in Psalms. He says, Psalm 132. He said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. He said, And forget not all his benefits. And if you go down that scripture, you begin to see when he started listing what you should thank God for, I mean, the things he's thanking God for. So, just see it that there is nothing within your capacity or outside your capacity that is your doing. Mm -hmm. Everything you are, you, you are, you have been, you will ever be in this God. If they tell you the cost of oxygen, ah, mm, you can't afford it. If they tell you the mm -hmm. cost of oxygen, will you be able to afford it? <laughs> so it's enough reason for you to give God thanks. Seek God. So the beauty is seek God in everything you everything, do. Yeah. Seek God in everything that happens around you. And guess what? Your victory will just be cheap. Even in the battles you're facing. Even in the battles. See it as God is using it to make your more There was something I was listening to, you know, yesterday I went for shopping in the house and while I was shopping, the one of the guys I buy things from, the guy was playing one of our postal arrowments. Is it arrowment now? Oh, sorry. Postal arrowment, yes. Apostle arrowment administration. And he said something that was very significant. It is struck my spirit. He said, God, God will not give you, take you to some certain heights until you're tried. Mm. So there are some battles. He said, there are some battles God allow you to go through so that He can try you through the fire. You will come out unborn because you are good and you'll be so refined. By the time you're speaking or by the time you are where you are, you, God wants you to be, you have debts. 
then you, you then you you know where you're coming from. Of course, you, it's hard for you to let go of what you know, which is the God you have known. Yes. That when that took you through that fire, through that storm, and brought you out of scratch, then you know that God. So, so, so the word I took from there was like, in everything, give thanks. Even in that battle that looks as if oh. Oh God, maybe you are going to die. You will not die. You will not die. Because God will bring you out. Mm -hmm. He has nothing that can take you. As long as you're the child of God, you stay in the path of righteousness. No battle will swallow you. Because he said, he will not give to you that which you cannot handle. Mm -hmm. Before he gets to that point, he will make a way of escape. Of so, whatever it is, I just, I don't know, I used to start more. Yeah, yeah, just, uh, the, the, the last one is uh, something very critical. She just said something very striking, right? Everybody cherish gold, but if you know the process oh, no. gold went through mm. to become that gold, that beautiful, that beauty you you behold, you understand that in life there are some channels you go through, and that is the more reason why you should thank God. Hallelujah! Some people remain in captivity. Some people are in captivity as we speak today because the moment. They murmur. They complain. Complaining will only complicate your case. That's it. Right? So let's be watchful. Let's be guided as Christians. In short, if there's one thing you must terminate out of your life as fast as possible, is complaining, murmuring. The truth is, you murmur, did it change the situation? That's all. So why not do the one that will change the situation? Hallelujah. So the last one is. Your blessings are secure. One of the last benefits we're looking at today is your benefits of thanksgiving is your blessings are secure. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Malachi 2, 2, it says, if ye, if ye will not ye, and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, see it the Lord of all. He said, I, I even said, Send a curse upon you, and I will. Oh Lord, have mercy! He said, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay it to heart. Hallelujah! May this not be your portion in the name of Jesus. So we are talking about securing your blessings. When you don't thank God for that which He has done, a curse automatically. He said, yea, I have cursed them already, because you did not what lay it to heart. To say thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. So, I will encourage you today. Nothing is too small. To say, oh God, this is too small for me to say thank you. No. Because it's too small, that's why you should say thank you. Hallelujah. Remember the, in the testimony I shared a while ago, I said, even when, you know what it means for a security, security man to tell you, you can't come in. Oh, some of them can. After you've checked, <laughs> your shoes are piled. <laughs> in fact, my shoes were bent. You know? You know what it means? When they just say, Ah, Father, I thank you. You know, you're going to sell a product worth millions. And nobody's giving you orders. The day they will tell you, some, some persons will just feel pity for you. Okay, they will ask you the questions that they already know. <laughs> uh, okay, let me have your flyer. Or your card that will call you. Guess what? They will never call. Never call. You know? But when they collect that card, ah, Father, thank you. Mm -hmm. Then, even when you tell me, uh, okay, just tell me what you do. I'll be so happy because someone has granted me audience. I was grateful for those things that somebody will say, imagine this kind of things, what you are giving time. Yes, I gave God thanks. And it, 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 it was never the same. So one of the testimonies that I, I skipped, or uh, one of the miracles God, miracle God did, you know, like I said, when I started, I was using public transport. After a while, my manager just called me and said, you know what, going forward, you'll be doing a daily cab. Wow. So no more trekking. <laughs> so a driver will be driving me. And even in one of the days where I was entering bus, the pocket picked me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> the only money remaining in my pockets. <laughs> you know? It's funny now. But, but, then it wasn't funny. but when I came down from the bus, I looked at myself. How will I get to my destination? I had to call a colleague. 
He now said, okay, take, come, uh, do it like this. Come meet me so that I will give you money. It was that bad, you know. But I, in the comfort of a of sitting in a car, AC, I'll go to the office. This time they will open the gate for me, you know. Yeah. The security will not, you know, never change. change. So I, I gained one step higher. Now, yeah. not at the security post anymore. Now I'll get to the reception. And the receptionist will attend to me. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so you know, and sometimes when it was another level of breakthrough for me as a thing, because now seeing that person, most times they are more nicer than those at the gate. So, thank God that message came in all things, give thanks, and I did that. That's why my blessing was not cost. I don't know what anybody might think, but to me, this is what has worked for me, right? So, may we not for victim of ungratefulness. They will not for victim in the name of Jesus. Yes, so you want to go well, I just want to follow the way of conclusion. Yes. As the Bible has said, in everything give thanks. What I will leave with everyone tonight is be thankful. Mm -hmm. No matter what. Thankful. It is not easy, but it is a habit that you can cultivate. It's it's easy, yeah. The same way you can cultivate how to pray. Or learn how to pray. Please mm -hmm. learn how to thank God. Mm -hmm. It will make your blessings come quick mm -hmm. and cheap. Praise the Lord. And one way for you to thank God, you have to have a relationship to be able to thank God. Of course. Because you cannot go and knock a gate and say, Father, I want to thank you. The man will ask you, God, do I know you? Mm -hmm. You become a bastard, you are not known. So mm -hmm. how will you not be a bastard before God? First is to give your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you were there before. Challenges of life situation pulled you away. You went astray. Just like the prodigal son, the Lord is asking you to come home. When you come, the Lord is not going to send you away. What did he do to the prodigal son? He cleaned him up. He made a feast for him mm -hmm. for returning home. So you might be that prodigal son, that prodigal daughter that has gone away. The Lord is asking you tonight, please come back home. Mm -hmm. And maybe you've not had a relationship with him before. You are not even understanding what they are talking about. You thank God, but I don't know who to thank. That's why tonight we're telling you, which of, how do you thank God? You have to have a relationship with Him first. Mm -hmm. That's where you will now be able to know what to say to the God that you have a relationship with. So, as a way of tonight, if you are there, you've not had a relationship with God, it's just a one line prayer. A brother mm -hmm. here will lead, you, <laughs> will lead you to, to mm -hmm. Christ and would um, round up for tonight. So, Hallelujah. Thanks, God. So, just say this after us. Uh, Father, thank you, thank you for this word that has come forward. Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life before you. King of have mercy upon me. Cleanse me by the blood of Jesus. Cleanse me from all unrighteous acts. I accept you today, Lord Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior. Save me, Jesus. And I denounce Satan, Satan and all his work in Jesus' name. Amen. I will just pray with you. Father, we say thank you, thank you for these ones that have accepted you today as their Lord and Savior. Preserve them Amen. by the blood of Jesus. Amen. King of glory, cause this one to walk in your path in the name of Jesus. Amen. They will not fall behind. They will keep serving you all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank Amen. you all so much for joining. I'm so sorry about the hiccups in our, over the network. I noticed there was a little bit of itch on the network tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, we pray that next week network will be a lot better. I'll work on it and see that we don't have this itch. For the Facebook family, we are so, so sorry. It just went up totally. I tried to reconnect. It still went up again. So sorry about that. Please, um, I will upload the whole the full video on YouTube and we share the link so that you can go back and watch. If you have any questions, please do well to reach out to us. Or leave it on the comment if you can. If you can, and secondly, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on all our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, we are on TikTok, we are on Meta, we are on Instagram. So thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you next week. To have a lovely weekend as it comes. Go back tomorrow and see you next week. God bless you. Bye for now. Bye.